take a look at they have a range tenure so we need to do a plan and we need to figure out what animals they have find out the animals that they have and are they using the water where are they using the water source i know they have a well and i also know the cameron river flows through there so are the animals using the river and if they are then we have to put a plan together as not to overuse it and if there's a wet area we want to protect that wet area because it contributes to the river and i know there's mineral lakes there and i hear of our members hunting so if there's mineral lakes then how do we protect those mineral lakes against domestic animals what do you think are using the licks? So that would be moose, moose elk. elk. I heard of, of the elk coming through and also the deer. Some things that were done years ago isn't applicable today. So right. That's something that we have to keep an eye out for. Okay, so off the top, range is managed under the Forest and Range Practices Act, FERPA. And so you look to there for your management guidelines and then you look, you look to certain regulations. Um, you also look to the, uh, the Land Act and to the Agricultural Land Commission and the Agricultural Land Reserve for your guidance from a regulatory perspective. And what you see are um, crown tenures that are range licenses and range leases that will have associated range use plans. And so the range use plan will link you back to the specific legislation. And what I would pay attention to is where there is delegated authority by a decision maker to include things like treaty rights into a range use plan. I would look very carefully at those sections of the whole regulatory picture. And what, what I have found is that the decision makers under FERPA, they, their decision making authority is quite limited. So you have to pay attention to where the decision making fits. And I do believe it's at the initial stages of a range use plan. And so when it comes to the renewal of range use plans, our decision maker will not have authority. And so you just need to pay attention to these finer details in your whole legislative period. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, all the plans within the ministries, they're all outdated. They need to be completely updated and take a look at the environment and match it up. And what do you think are the key pieces that you wanted, you'd want to see have included in any plan? The key pieces is for the individuals from that range department to come out and analyze the dire straits that we're in today and make those adjustments. So cattle out of the creeks? Yes. Limit the number of cattle? Yes. And when, you, when you take a look at this Cameron River, the river it, it used to be called a river it's no it's not even a creek so the adjustments should be made immediately and those plans should be adaptive they should be reviewed every five years cattle create a number of issues when it comes to water courses including loss of vegetation soil compaction chemical contamination, and other challenges. When you don't have flow? Uh, when you've got the manure and the, the pee from the cows, it's not being flushed away. Yeah. That is the, that's what is a huge concern because it's complete contamination then, right? It's not going anywhere. Another significant issue is the damming of smaller tributaries and creeks to create water draws to water the cattle. This can create low flow conditions downriver. Lack of downstream flow from artificial draws and too many beaver dams create conditions where minnows are trapped in small pools and die. 
there's no water. And the fish are trapped. Yes, they are There's stuck. It's, it's monitoring where they are on a regular basis. So whoever owns the cattle should be monitoring and say, okay, the cattle has stayed out here too long and he can tell by how much grazing that was done and pull them out. Okay. Because with the amount of wildlife cat activity, you see the deer and the fawns, the prints here. You don't want to use fences to keep them out. You want the animals to have that freedom to come in to the river and, and not be as obstructed because they need the water source as much as a cat, as any animal does. And when you look at the surrounding vegetation, you can pretty well tell where their potential habitat could be. So you want that water source on a regular basis for them to access it. So I've seen in range plans, it's you check the cattle every two days or every three days. It's a really active management yeah. of them to keep, okay. Yeah, I would recommend that highly. So this would be classified as a mineral lake because of the number of of uh, tracks that you see in this lake and how it's heavily utilized that the uh, it shows that the animals are coming in and if you look at the vegetation you can tell how long this has been used because the bit, some of the vegetation is quite high and has been knocked down quite a bit so this is really this is the, the actual lake that they were talking about that's been around for a number of years and if you take a video of the surrounding area you can see how high the vegetation is and how much the animals have knocked it down this is actually fantastic and you can actually see the salt which i know you, you can't always see it you can't always see it but this one you do see it and there's a bit of an iron deposit right there right in the middle that's also important yeah but both cattle and ungulates want to use these Yes, the, um, this is really good for ungulates because it helps the antlers grow and also for the pre pregnant cows that come in. It really brings in the minerals for their fetuses. And you'll note that once the cow has its calves in the spring, they'll stick around the mineral lick to actually, so that the young calf gets its nutrients. So when it comes to cattle, can the farmer or the rancher just put out the mineral blocks? The, the, they can take put the mineral blocks, but it has to be a, quite a distance from this mineral lick. Okay. You need to draw the cattle away from this. Okay. okay. Yeah. And also with mineral licks, do you get a lot of trails coming towards it? Is that a good sign? That is a fantastic sign too. It's once you notice that all of the trails are actually coming into this lake. What's another thing? Another thing is when you'll notice that if you drive the wildlife away and they no longer utilize this mineral lake, it will eventually dry up. It's the animals, the wild animals that keep it open. And keep that moisture re yes. regime that we need to. See, Kara, this is what I wanted to document is a dry bed, river bed. And this is from the beavers. No water. And the fish are trapped. It could be a small one. So we're looking for beaver sign. There's a, and they actually go up in there and kind of click, make a hole. So they actually will nest, which is, a, well, they'll actually burrow into the bank side. Yeah. As opposed to lodges, which you get further south. That's yeah. interesting. They, so uh, would there be a community of them or is there just usually one on its own? Uh, this could be a small one starting out, like a juvenile starting on its own.
right here. Stuck. Yes, they are they're, stuck. It's not raining for another week, so they're... By the end of Martin? Yeah. It was too small to be Fisher. Yeah. So that's the wildlife trail. Yeah. You can see it really goes right down. And you were asking about iron rich. You see the film on the water? Yeah. That is iron bacteria. This is... Yeah. So what is this? This is scentless camera. And this is, this is a real highly oh, invasive. Those are bad. Yeah. And the best way to get rid of them is to hand pick them and bag them. Before they go to seed, yeah. presumably. Yeah. So I'm sure picking it and lying it right back down is so just terrible. not helpful. <laughs> and then this is the clover over here. This is your alsig clo clover. Okay. And then this is your foxtail barley. And this stuff is awful as well. Like, okay. every year the vet puts out a notice, control your foxtail barley because it's going to wrap around your dog's teeth. Ooh. And yeah, so the dogs get sent to the vet a lot because of this stuff. Okay, and then what we're seeing is lots of invasives because of the cattle yeah. coming through and then the soil compaction is just creating a lot of disturbance, which is the invasives are taking What was good about the brows? This is actually good wildlife habitat. You know, the shrubs are high enough that it covers the moose. And it's like they linger here, like in the fall and the winter time when they're feeding. And then when you look at the adjacent tree line, that'd be really good for winter. Okay. Yeah. And cover. Yeah. Can't support. Uh, the cattle on your private property, maybe you should minimize the herd. It's not too many. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that's the theme for the ranch. Yeah. Right? Is less cattle. That's, yeah. Well, you've got fields. Yeah. Right? So you've got certain number of fields for your hay production, yeah. certain fields for your cows to hang out on. Yeah. And then as many as that can support. Should be the number. Yeah. yeah. So it keeps them out of the... Keeps them out of areas like that where it's important for wildlife. Invasive yeah. species encroaching in on the natural plants and vegetation because at one time this could have been an area where caribou was coming in. Yes, but now they can't because they've all been chased out. Well, yeah, and now your, your clover is taking over your... Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. So we follow the trail up. And as you can see, barbed wire fence. Because the water table's gone. So you lose the trees. Okay, we'll have to get the cattle out of here. 